All right, good morning, Saturday morning. Back with you. <laughs> Swig of coffee for all of us working stiffs out there. Get the uh, jar of ballastol out of the way. Been actually uh, cleaning the uh, the python. We were out shooting it a little bit there um, some time ago, and I didn't clean it. <laughs> so, but yeah, I just put the uh, ballastol in the old jelly jar. And uh, and just kind of dip patches and stuff through it. That's my uh, uh, tactical loadout there for you, old jelly jar. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, it's cool stuff. Uh, and you know what? Um, this actually, we're gonna specifically talk about some stuff here this week on the show, uh, courtesy for um, Ashley, uh, which she had left us a comment about some things, and and so we'll uh, we'll. We'll discuss some things. So I brought out a couple of mine um, as she was talking about some Western, as Ashley was talking about Western guns. All right, our guns of the Old West. But let's go ahead and read through the comments here. Uh, in no particular order, again, if your comment was not read, uh, it could have been because you uh, were late to comment uh, during the production of our show because we do work on production of the show during the week and then, you know, get that going but, um, you know, I haven't been out, um, speaking of all that, I haven't been out uh, shooting as much as I would like to. Uh, and every now and then, uh, we'll hit the indoor range is usually what we do. But honestly, just uh, with just body aches and stuff like that and having to go to the chiropractor so much that uh, I haven't been feeling up to it. <laughs> so... Uh, but yeah, anyway, <clears throat> well, I wanted to, what I big, what I really wanted to do was get some uh, uh, different types of uh, video uh, done out there for you folks um, on the uh, the Python and everything. That's what I really want to do because I think it's such a really cool uh, revolver, but uh, and the grips and everything. So, but anyway, uh, you know, life happens, right? <laughs> so, okay. Uh, first one up here is uh, Slimfire. It says, Morning, JW. Hope you had a, a great Memorial Day weekend or uh, this past uh, week. Uh, hopefully, everybody had their nice Memorial Day uh, weekend stretch. Hopefully, everybody had a, at least a, a couple of days off um, and everything. So, uh, my schedule is kind of different and weird. So, uh, I still did have a nice little weekend. But, uh, you know, it just kind of works out differently for me than most. But that's okay. Um, as we honor men and women who served and, uh, and are serving this great country. Awesome set of revolvers. Love the grips, too. Uh, thanks for your collector's radio talk show. I really enjoy it. Slim. Well, we really thank you, and thank you for being here, Slim, because you are what makes this possible. And you reading and making comments and all that, and that goes for everybody here. And that when you make comments and everything like that, uh, sometimes it uh, certain comments will dictate what we talk about on the show because in the end, this is your show. All right, Mike. Hello, JW. I purchased a new Colt Anaconda. Sounds like Mike finally did it. <laughs> all right, Mike has got his Anaconda 44 mag, four inch, last week. My resistance was futile. <laughs> it shoots like a dream. The weight of the revolver is all in the right places. It's awesome. So much fun. Uh, also, a movie that highlights the Smith, uh, the Smith and Wesson uh, Model 66 two and a half is The River Wild with Kevin Bacon. Hmm. I don't think I've seen that. But uh, that's cool. I appreciate that. You know, I like I like when people uh, add stuff in there that we uh, you know we didn't know. Cause I honestly the two inch sixty six like you said the only, like I said the only one that uh, that came to my mind was the gauntlet with uh, Clint Eastwood. That I believe that's what he's got in it. Uh, but no, I and I like Kevin Bacon. So uh, so best wishes from Montana. All right. Well, you know what? That's really cool, Mike. I'm glad you got the uh, the anaconda, and that's what's really neat for me too. Like that's what I really enjoy hearing that the Colt brought these snake guns back out, <clears throat> is that people are having a chance to go out and get them. And honestly, 
truthfully, in my opinion, these uh, new Colts that they brought out, these new snake guns and these revolvers that they've been doing, uh, it's been so impressive. Uh, I think they're they're one of the. I think they're probably gonna go out and say this because I'm pretty confident in saying this. I, I think they're the best revolvers on the market currently right now, uh, as far as new production. Um, uh, it you know <clears throat> we haven't gotten to the point where. I will say that uh, they kind of, uh, but I'm sure that Anaconda, and it is, uh, the Anaconda is definitely um, possibly on my list to purchase. I probably am going to end up with an Anaconda just because I like shooting a 44, uh, so I might have to end up with an Anaconda myself, although I, I really enjoy the Pythons. All right. Um, but I never did have one of those anacondas from the past. Uh, but I did hear Mike. Uh, I did when I when those came out. I was in a gun shop. And I was talking to an older fella there, and you know, and I always usually gravitate towards the older fellas because they've been there and they've done it and they lived it. And I was talking to him, and he even said, you know, he had an anaconda from the '90s or whatever, and uh, he said that. That he definitely felt that the new Anaconda was far, 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 far more superior than the uh, the the older one that was. So also, uh, Mike, uh, the in case I you probably already know this, but I'm just throwing this information out there for anybody. The new Anaconda, you can put the Python grips on it. And that's one of the really cool things about it. Crazy Scotsman. Uh, good show, brother. Glad to be back. I agree. Magnum Force is of the be Magnum Force, one of the better Dirty Harry movies, uh, as far as seeing the Model Twenty, the, the Twenty Nine in action. I also agree. The ending was disappointing at all, and also felt like they were building up to a great battle scene, only for it to be an explosion. Yeah, morning that 29. It may rest in peace uh, since they cannot blow uh, someone's head clean off anymore. <laughs> also, you know, with the, the Anaconda, um, uh, it's interesting. I was reading, um, again, you know, just to give him a, a plug, which I am not, I definitely don't mind plugging his, uh, his work because I think it's phenomenal. Uh, that the deer hollow grips uh, again you know any of those python grips that he offers can be put on that that anaconda of yours and those are exact copies of the old school python grips and whatnot so uh, he does have a, a reproduction of the original original python or anaconda grips but those will not fit on him uh, he does talk about that on his website i had no idea that they had those out Again, I wasn't that interested in the, the anacondas, and uh, or really, I wasn't that interested in the snake guns in the past. I always thought they were really pricey, um, and I didn't know that the original grips had uh, the the way they were designed for the anaconda. The wood ones would actually break. Uh, I didn't know they came with wood grips, uh, so that was news to me. I was selling them with rubber grips, um, but hey, you know, we learn something every day. All right, Gun Enthusiast, there's my brother from Texas. Uh, great show as always, brother. Uh, I appreciate you stopping by the channel. Yeah, I, <laughs> I speaking of that, I, I can, I had to have watched your, um, I think it was your, 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 uh, the struggles or something with the Glock 26 video. <laughs> I had to watch that about three times, man. That was really funny. I got a kick out of that one, really. That was, that was awesome. So, Check out the gun enthusiast. He's doing some shorts on there, and they're, they're really funny. They're great, they're great stuff. Um, a little bit of money with, uh, I was making, it would go back into to, to the channel, right? And I think majority of us, that's what we do. You know, it always, it, even for me, back when I was in full gear making uh, outdoor production videos and stuff like that, back when we were on the island, the great, you know, the great Hawaii uh, and doing all that stuff, which was really just a load of fun. I can't explain, I can't express how much fun that those times were. Um, yeah, I mean, all that money that, that, you know, for what little there was, um, went right back into the channel. We, we um, bought things to either blow up or do something with. Ammo or whatnot. So, um, 
that's about it. But it was what, it, but it is what it is. All good. I'm still here watching your videos, bro. I appreciate that. Uh, while I'm feeding my the canines <laughs> and watching a Saturday morning show. Oh yeah, that's right. And we got one here, Jeffrey Richardson's Good Morning, Oh My Snakes. <laughs> Aaron, Magnum Force is my favorite movie. I've watched it so many times I lost count in all the excitement, right? Uh, Model 29, uh, Blue, 4-inch Python, Snubby, uh, Model 19, all in one movie. The best opening movie his in history. Yes, or best mo opening in movie history. I couldn't argue with that. That is probably the coolest movie opening ever. Um, that one ranks right up there with Brannigan. Um, of course, Brannigan was just kind of, uh, you know, they did what they did with it. You can tell probably they were very influenced by the Magnum Force opening. But yes, uh, Magnum Force is probably takes the cake for old school 70s action, you know, blow them up, shoot them up movies. Uh, that opening is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and you, you almost can guarantee uh, John Milius had something to do with that. <laughs> Great cars on Magnum Force as well. Now I have to check out Deer Hollow. Yeah, um, Deer Hollow. He's selling. He's sell. He's always sold out uh, because his product is just speaks for itself, and people are scooping him up. You know, uh, you know. I mean, I'm not sponsored or anything like that to say that, but I'm just saying uh, as a consumer, as somebody that's bought his products, uh, they're well worth it. Somebody had uh, made a comment too, which is very true, that. The money you would have saved anyway by buying a more inexpensive set of grips, uh, the happiness and the, the the satisfaction you would have got by just spending the extra and getting something from uh, Deer Hollow uh, would have just paid in, it paid in full uh, ten times over, and uh, that is so true. All right, Sean, Sean, I'm gonna get you, sucker. Is another uh, good movie. Yes, it is. That one's a uh, it, it's very funny. <laughs> that's a very funny one I believe that one came out later too later in the 80s <laughs> um, but yeah that was, that was a good fun one and you know what else too is just I mean even though it's not too much like uh, I mean it, it to me it kind of goes out there too it, it's still it's got its moments is uh, Harlem Nights the Eddie Murphy Richard Pryor you know that's another great one out there uh, but yeah, I'm gonna get you, sucker. That's a that that's got the Wayan brothers, I believe, in that one. Um, amongst uh, with uh, genre with Isaac Hayes, amongst others, definitely a goofy movie. <laughs> yes, I'm down for however long you want to do your shows. Um, I enjoy checking out your collection. Well, I appreciate that, Sean. Yeah, and uh, you know, I know a lot of people do enjoy tuning into these uh, type of deals or shows or whatnot. Like, um, you know, I heard. Uh, People like to do it on uh, these type of things on when they're doing their long drive or something, maybe on their way to work or a uh, next destination or something like that. So, you know, appreciate that. You know, we, we definitely uh, want you here listening. So, all right, Nick, Nick Park. According to a cult rep, the three vent four and a quarter pythons were corrected to be two vent rib, which should make the three vent four and a quarter a collector's variant. Time will tell if that is correct. We'll see if that is correct. Um, that would be nice if Colt would actually listen. Um, I'm sure, like I said this before, I'm, I'm going to say that I think... I would think there'd be enough people because you're not talking about something that's a four hundred, five hundred dollar uh, item. I mean, it's, the the thing is MSRP to fifteen, fifteen hundred. Now I know I, you know, as working stiff myself, nine to fiver, I don't have just fifteen hundred bucks just to go and just throw it out there, just to throw it out there and not miss it. Um, I know it kind of it it. it it uh, if they're not gonna do it, if the if the three vent is all they're gonna offer, I'll eventually get one, but it wouldn't be a top priority for me uh, because it's not a complete deal breaker for me. 
it's not. Uh, I, I, I enjoy the thing so much that I, I would end up probably getting one. Um, but it would be nice that to see the two because that's more of the tradition and that's kind of what's funny is because that's what they're they're always like harping up on uh, that cult tradition tradition you know tradition never dies and all that but yet be a broke tradition but anyway i don't know maybe it's just being too picky too much of a purist um i i rant and you know give so much uh you know kudos to the python and cult for doing it that you know, I didn't want to, you know, I, I know it sounds like, oh, he's just a fanboy, and I am, I'm, but I'm, I'm also realizing and recognizing the quality of that revolver that's out, but I'm not going to nitpick at stuff that, to me, is just infinitesimal, you know, it's like uh, somebody griping about the little gap that's in front of the the trigger guard where it meets or the trigger where it comes down through a frame there's a on the originals there was a little gap right there where it met the thing and then somebody going on in some elaborate complaint about oh well the old one was more elegant and graceful than did that what are you talking about <laughs> that is just that kind of complaint is just asinine um that to me is not a complaint. That you know, and then somebody says, uh, "Oh well, the originals didn't have a, a red ramp or orange ramp barrel. Uh, the Smiths did from the '70s. Nobody complained about that. But yeah, I actually am glad they did that because it makes the thing easier to shoot. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I, can't. my eyesight is you know, I'm getting older and it's getting harder to see those sights, and I want to continue to shoot it. And that gun was made to shoot, not to be a collector's item in the, in the safe. So, all that being said, now, when I talk about, when I want to critique something or give them a ration of something, that third vent rib on that, I think is worth mentioning. That is, to me, something that is, that was a little bit of a head scratcher. I was like, really? And then I seen the, the eight inch barrel. The eight inch barrel has like five ribs across it. It really crowds it. Uh, somebody made a comment, I don't know if it's on this one or not, but somebody actually said, you know, it kind of makes it look cheap, like some of the other inexpensive brands out there that was doing something like that. And I have to agree. Uh, so I, I will say that. Uh, I will kick Colt for that one because they, I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know who made that decision. It's like, you know, when you're talking about tradition, tradition, you know. But, yeah, and back to that, uh, Nick, about that, the uh, third, the, th the three vent uh, variant will become a collector's item. Probably so, definitely, not in my lifetime. Uh, it'll be after I'm dead and gone, then it'll be a collector's item. So it doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> um, I'll let the uh, next generation uh, worry about that. <laughs> All right, uh, Bohemian Hunting Club. Uh, good morning, good morning. Yes. All right. And then Ashley uh, Wilkerson says, uh, I would like to see you talk more about uh, guns from the Old West. Yes, and she did get a thumbs up. Uh, thumbs there all right uh stevie stevie dilton I, i'm sorry if i'm not you know uh hi bat jack uh you know i bought a colt trooper mark three in 1983 i would like to see colt uh, build the trooper mark six different barrel sizes and maybe a blue maybe blue stainless uh, just a thought. Yeah, I uh, would definitely like to see, I would really would like to see, and I think somebody had said this at uh, one time, I definitely would like to see them do like the Trooper, the all those police uh, guns again. That would be kind of cool to see those kind of repop back out. Um, Colt is, they, they're right there, they're on the right track, and they just need somebody there to be like, hey, you know, don't, deviate just keep that tradition you know keep make it make the guns of yesteryear and bring them back if you're going to change something uh you know be very careful about what you change because they're under a heavy heavy duty microscope and right now you're dominating the market if you just stay the course 
don't start doing goofy things and and deviating it from it. The Viper, I'm not gonna lie, that Viper, especially a three inch Viper, has definitely got my radar. I really, and I'm thinking, I, I'm gonna have to end up with one of those. And mainly, a lot of this interest for me is coming from the quality of that the revolver they're producing. If I felt that, if I personally, if I felt any indication that they were fragile or kind of not manufactured to a top or a higher quality, I probably would have no interest in it. Uh, even with the, the snake guns or your pythons or whatever. So, all right, Lion Quest Fitness, making money off YouTube, question mark. Nope, <laughs> it barely pays for ammo, not to mention uh, props, guns, accessories for all the hours you put in for a six minute video, you might make $1.99 <laughs> $1 before expenses. Uh, you do video uh, as a labor of love. That, that couldn't be further from the truth. <laughs> um, you know, none of, uh, especially, I'm speaking for myself for sure, um, you know, we're not the big top dogs in this, you know, and not making all the, the you know, the money. It's just not happening. <laughs> I do this for you folks because I, you know, it. this is what, um, you know, we have a, ni a nice little group here and we have this uh, little event that we do every Saturday. And that's in the bottom line is that's what we do it for. And you folks, uh, we, we tune in and everything so that all the people love it and that's why we do it so all right that's the uh that's the comments here and uh you know what because you weren't there joe we're gonna still have a swig of coffee for joe all right cowboy uh cowboy guns of the west for me uh started really with this one here it didn't completely start here though uh, my very first one, I don't have it anymore, was a, um, is a Beretta Stampede. That's the one I had uh, in the early, early days. I had a Beretta Stampede. It was a stainless steel one. I don't even think they make it anymore. Uh, really, it was a nice, a nice revolver. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, this is the, uh, the second one I ended up with. This is the Cimarron. Uh, what is known as the Rooster Shooter, which is a copy of the Duke's uh, six gun. They probably what they I think they did was they just went to the museum, looked at it, and said, "Hey, you know, let's replicate that. Try to get that, you know, uh, replica of that and down to the grips." They uh, did the uh, the yellow or the orange style uh, grips that he had on his six gun. So. And uh, if you know the story with that, you know, you know, the story of me and the grips and everything, this is the 45 long colt, or 45 colt, whatever you want to say. Um, this is the one I had on the uh, back home in the island, and same, you know, same one that I've had in the beginning of the uh, YouTube channel and everything. I didn't, the, the Beretta Stampede is not on the channel because that was actually before I did YouTube. Um, and I had since then gotten rid of it prior, prior to that. So this was this is the one that um, also antiqued finished it, so it, it may look different than the one you see. And then I had to recreate the grips myself because the originals broke. So I took uh, molds of the originals and recreated them, uh, including the color. My color may be just slightly different, but for the most part, I tried to do it uh, exactly. And they, even the, the originals that were on it were actually, uh, one side was darker than the other. So I even did, the, I guess, the re, re to re, reproduction of the color as well. I tried to get it as close as it will get to. Um, what really, you know, for me, the single actions, they all work, you know, pretty much like that, you, you know. This one actually, this is the, the, who is this one made by? They're imported by Cimarron, uh, but they're made, so this is a Pieta made one. Some are Uberti, Uberti Pieta. Those are the two major ones that you'll see by Cimarron or Taylors and Company or um, uh, whoever else is importing them. I think Chiapa might be or something. But uh, these are, the reason I like these the most is because these are exact copies of the, the, the old uh, Colt Peacemaker, really, without breaking the bank. 
Uh, although Colt does offer their Peacemaker now still, and I think it's around, uh, at least their website says it's about 17 so that's not bad. Considering, uh, you know, it's not going to cost you three grand for, you know, one of those. I don't know how, how they hold up or anything like that. I never had one, but they're out there. But I, I do, I, I have no problem with the, uh, the Italian imports. Uh, they're fun, uh, and, they're, and that's what it is for me. It's a fun range, uh, range pistol or revolver, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's a, truly a lot of fun at the range. When, you, uh, when I saw the videos of people punching out the big old pieces of brass out of that 45 Colt, uh, you know, cylinder here, when I saw those big pieces of brass being punched out, I man, I fell in love with it. Of course, all the Western movies, growing up with all the, you know, watching El Dorado and Big Jake and all the, you know, John Wayne flicks uh, way too many times, which is what really got me into, you know, his, and most of all mine are going to have the yellow stocks on them because of my love for all the, the Duke's uh, films, at least from the mid-60s and on. So how these work, uh, if you don't know, if you've never played with them or messed with them, they have a loading gate, and you pop the loading gate open, you got to put the thing on half cock, and that frees the cylinder up, you punch them out with the, uh, the ejector rod here, and you load them up. Traditionally, what I do, uh, that's just because the way when I got into these and I... Uh, I was taught about these by the old school uh, cowboy action shooters and whatnot, even though I don't do any of that stuff. I just like to go and roll cans and plink steel and stuff like that and just kind of relax and have a, you know, that, that's just my idea of uh, going out and having enjoying these things. I'm not trying to run them as fast as they can go or, or anything or, you know, have to do the action work so they're breakneck speed and all that. I'm not interested in that stuff. But... You load one and you skip one, you load the others and you have five and then you cock the hammer down and you should be able to drop it down on a uh, empty chamber. That's the way you do it. Uh, these newer ones have some different types of safety features that, uh, that you can do it. Um, this one here you can actually put the hammer back on that first notch and push the uh, base pin down to the other notch who has two notches on it and what that does is it kind of allows that hammer to um, rest off of the frame and without protruding the firing pin into the frame so i i know it's not like it's not the way it was back in the day but it's a safety feature that's not blatantly obvious they didn't put a giant lever on top of this gun that says hey click here for you know on safety or off safety so again real slick way to do it and keeping the slick lines of the thing uh, exactly the way it is some of the new ones now have the three clicks honestly who cares i don't care as long as like i said they didn't put a a big you know lever or something like that on it this is actually what i ended up um, kind of moving towards, oh, the alarms are going off, um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> this is actually um, <coughs> what I ended up now kind of messing with as far as a cowboy caliber goes. This is a 3840, same thing, it, uh, but this one has the three clicks, one, two, three, yeah, and like I said, I don't, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Some people freak out about it. I don't care. Again, as long as they didn't put a giant switch on it or something like that, um, I'm fine with that. Uh, you can actually see the base pin sits all the way into this one versus this one. I don't know if you can see that, the base pin right there. Okay, the reason for that is actually this is more traditional way it would have looked. The base pin all the way down in there. That's because the new ones have a different safety uh, system in it. It's all internal. Uh, so if you tear into these things on the trigger itself, there's a shoe or something on there, and that pushes up on this lever that lives inside the hammer. I know I'm probably trying to, I'm probably ruining this gun for everybody. Everybody's gonna be like, I don't want to get that now. Um, it pushes up a lever in there which protrudes the firing pin forward, uh, so it will set it off. So you kind of got to, stuff in it is, it is different. So you got to kind of bear with that you know, if you're going to get into it and everything. Again, these are just range pieces for me. I'm not 
it's not something that uh, you know I'm I'm trying to you know go compete with or anything like that. So the, they are what they are. They're they're cool. They're single actions. Uh, if you don't like all the things that they may have done, like I said, you can go to Colt now and get one of theirs if you want to. If you so uh, feel, and plus in the end you'd have a, a actual Colt. Um, but this one's in 3840. I actually really enjoy the 3840 uh, cartridge. Uh, it's kind of weird because it's actually a 40 caliber uh, projectile. And maybe, I don't know if the numbers got swapped or who knows. I mean, people get all freaked out about that stuff. and you know. But it is a neat, uh, it is a neat round. Uh, it's, uh, I believe it, the way it was described was it was kind of like a, uh, a 4440 casing neck down to the 40 caliber uh, so it does have a, a slight taper down it is a bottleneck cartridge uh, if you're thinking of hand loading it which I do um, something like this you definitely want to hand load uh, it's a little bit more of a challenge so you gotta really kind of um, have some experience with reloading and all that before you uh, do it and I got these really cool old reproduction boxes that um, you know they're they're stiff uh, chipboard or whatever uh, so those are cool um, it was actually at the uh, at a local shop down here that does mostly the, the cowboy stuff he's the one that got me into 3840 and once I did once I got one and I shot it this one pretty much went into retirement um, I pretty much had not too much interest in the 45 Colt anymore uh, as far as the stuff like this and uh, you know kind of moving on over to this i do have a lever gun right now it is a uh, 4440 so you know definitely kind of moved away from the 45 colt uh although over the times i did have a double action i had a couple double action uh smith and wessons in 45 colt known as i think it was the model 25 but honestly i the reason i let those go and got rid of them i always felt that the 45 Colt is just always a cowboy cartridge, and it's just gonna, you know, I'd, I'd rather it be, if I'm gonna mess around with that cartridge, I want a single action, you know, like this. I always thought, just felt like, uh, and for me, those big bore Smiths like that, um, I'm a 44 Magnum, you know, person. I, I think that's just, you know, where Indiana stay stuck with, you know, so. And, uh, you know, just clearing out most of the collection anyway, so just getting rid of a lot of stuff. Um, and just didn't need to feel the need to hang on to things that either I didn't shoot anymore or just collected just for the sake of collecting it and got rid of all that stuff. Um, didn't really want anything more that was, uh, if the brass was hard to find, like 30 carbine or something like that, I wasn't going to mess with that anymore, just get rid of it. So, you know, and I, I've just been like that a little bit more uh, lately about just getting rid of stuff. And just, you know, I'm not going to mess with it. I'm not going to use it or whatever. I just get rid of it. I know. It's kind of like, whoa, you know, you're just, you know, dismantling everything and just getting rid of everything. But I have been more feeling like a, a getting rid of and liquidating and, and bringing the collection down to more um, stuff that, I don't mind, I'm still a collector, obviously, I'm more of a collector than anything, but I want to collect stuff and still be able to take it out and enjoy it, and I want to kind of stick with uh, stuff, um, you know, as far as gaining components, brass and stuff, I want stuff that it's pretty available, um, you know, it says somebody with 3840, but uh, I can go down to the local shop here, there's a source for it, uh, there is, Starline does make it, so it's available, it is, it is obtainable. So, but anyway, yeah, that's uh, these, and uh, I actually may feature another uh, type of uh, Western uh, uh, rifle on the channel that hopefully in the near future, uh, I'll be able to bring it out and show it to you. Uh, I just got to go and get it. <laughs> so, but when I start doing the grips, I'll speak a little bit about the grips. Uh, anybody that's actually still here at the show after half an hour uh, in here, that's 30 something minutes that you'll never ever get back in your life. Um, but the, the original grips, like I said, for the rooster shooter, the original grips broke. They fell on the ground and they broke. And that really, it was like, oh my gosh, which led me actually, that's what led me to creating my own grips. Which, so it was kind of, um, you could almost say it was a blessing in disguise, uh, a hard lesson, but it, 
ended up providing me with uh, something, a knowledge on something that is to me really invaluable now uh, that I can uh, pretty much shape and fit single action grips, uh, at least onto the Colt clones or the Colts. Um, I, I learned how to do it by uh, talking to people on the island as surfboard makers. That's kind of what where I started with. I start talking to people with the surfboard, uh, you know, down there because everybody's surfing and everything. So this is actually a set of a very original sets that I created when I was on the island. Um, this is made out of the old, the older material that I used to use uh, from the uh, the surfboard companies and stuff like that. And after talking to them, and as you can see here, one of the downfalls of this material is it's extremely brittle. Uh, this actually happened under just simply just use and it's very, they're fragile. They look the best, they feel the best, but they are very fragile uh, and they break. And hence I found that out when I, you know, obviously the original set breaking. Um, the materials, the stuff I've been using now with these things, uh, it does have more of a flex and a give. They're, they, um, under, um, under extreme heat, they do tend to uh, flex more. But that is because the reason I chose to go with this material was because I'd rather have that than this. These can take a drop. You could actually take this panel off and throw it onto the ground pretty decently hard and probably not break. I'm not saying they won't break or ever will not break. They can, but not as easily as this. This, you could drop it and it'll, it'll shatter. It's almost like glass. So that's the difference as a trade-off. But ended up, uh, you know, kind of learning uh, how to do that and, and messing with that. Ended up being a real happy, happy accident that turned into something like this that I can, uh, you know, work on and do and everything. So uh, that's been a whole lot of fun and messing with that stuff. So anyway, uh, I'm going to get out of here. You enjoy your weekend and everything. And I appreciate everybody tuning in and hanging out on the radio show, the collector's radio show here for uh, Saturday morning. So 